Okay. Um, this will be, I think we can make this relatively short. I'm the only one between you and lunch because a lot of these <laughs> concepts and ideas have been discussed already. So, um, so the next step. So, so uh, we talked a bit about what was done for this first uh, Parsley release. Uh, and the next steps really are benchmarking the force fields that are produced and bringing in data for future parameterization. What sorts of data are next? So the general strategy is uh, we want to prem. Uh, I should be playing. No wonder it's not in it. It's not actually. Then there we go. Uh, the general strategy we want to be using throughout the course of this effort is uh, parameterize on cheaper quantities that we can generate by cheaper quantities to generate by simulation. Uh, benchmark on more expensive quantities, and then gradually over time as our ability to calculate gets better as, as computational resources change. Uh, we shift data from benchmarking to parameterization. Things get moved into that set, and you bring in more complex things, more data into the, the benchmarking set. So, uh, so, um, you know, current plan. So, this is a key part. Like whatever we do here, we've been talking a lot about these other things. We need this experimental property data to be able to um, make sure the force field works. So. Um, the initial pro physical properties to the first release, there weren't that many physical properties used. So Simon did a great job of getting this together in a short amount of time, uh, using densities in HVAP for pupillage near room temperature uh, from thermal ML. Uh, we're just optimizing existing Leonard Jones types. Uh, only uh, the only, so the, not all the SMERC strings corresponding to Leonard Jones types of change, only the ones that involve at least two HVAPs and two densities, which is about half the total. Those are the only ones that are allowed to vary, who were not uh, overfitting things. Uh, really, it's just 30 compounds, the other compounds, and 58 total data points. So there, there wasn't that much data that was involved in the beginning uh, because we were just making sure the workflow worked. Simon did an immense amount of work to make sure that it did work. Um, the uncertainties uh, used in this. So uh, we use an important part of physical property prediction is using uh, properly using uncertainty. If it is a, a type of data that has a large uncertainty, you don't want to be overemphasizing that. And in Bayesian inference, that comes in through your error model. Uh, and, uh, but even in optimization, that is essentially equivalent to a regularization, that you penalize uh, missing that uh, value more if uh, your uncertainty is low. And if uh, you don't know it very well, then your penalty is large. And that's, that can be mapped directly to regularization. So for now, uh, we're, we're taking the uncertainties for the average uncertainties for density in HVAP overall thermal. For reasons I'll yeah. um, So uh, we want complex, so, so what, what other sets of data will we use? Using densities and heat of vaporizations are things that have been used you know, for decades to improve force fields. But what do we want to do? We want complex fluid measurements that are sufficiently easy to compute. Uh, really, the hypothesis is that getting the composition dependent properties right in binary and ternary liquids will go quite a ways towards getting protein ligand interactions right. But really, you know, Atoms is atoms. A hydroxyl group is a hydroxyl group that, you know, as long as you take into account the chemical environment that it's bonded to, so you get the electrostatics right, um, it shouldn't matter what it's in. It's a small molecule of protein like an energy. And so, uh, because these calculations are significantly easier to converge in simulation and significantly easier to make precise experimentally. So, um, really, uh, thermodynamically, uh, if you have the Gibbs free energy uh, as a function of temperature, pressure, and all the various components, it is sufficient to characterize all the thermodynamics in NPT systems. You can't come up with a thermodynamic observable that isn't, if you know this, everything is set. All the thermodynamics, uh, th thermodynamic properties are set. Um, so we want to be trying to characterize this function, but it turns out you know, the change in Gibbs free energy with pressure is just the volume as a function of temperature, pressure, and composition. Um, and so there we can get that densities and mixtures, excess volumes, excess densities. These are all just different ways of measuring the volume as a function of uh, TP and composition. Uh, and if usually we think about free energy, a derivative of free energy with respect to temperatures being the entropy, but if you sort of recast it and do some uh, dimensional changing, then really the temperature dependence can be written in terms of the enthalpies as well, which we can get from uh, delta H's of mixing, delta H's of vaporization, uh, delta CP of mixing, where that's actually a second derivative property, but it gets us information about that free energy. And of course, uh, the change of free energy with respect to composition gives us uh, chemical potentials. And those chemical potentials can be, I mean, they're either tabulated directly or solvation free energies, activity coefficients, these are all just different ways of expressing the, uh, the chemical potential. Uh, and so, 
a few other things, uh, the electric constants related to the Gibbs free energy when electrical field is applied, or um, if we look at the change with respect to some interfacial area that gives us the surface tension. So really what we want to be doing is, you know, if we can understand the, the Gibbs free energy as a function of the things we vary, um, that provides us a guide to what the experimental data is telling us about. Um, so thermo -NL has a wide range of fluid mixture data collected from, the, from literature. Uh, as you can see, I mean, these, these are a number of data points in thousands. We've seen this graph before. There's a lot of data we can look at here. Uh, you know, uh, enthalpy, 30,000 enthalpies of mixing uh, over uh, a large number of compounds. So there's a lot we can, you know, heat capacity, a binary heat capacity. Heat capacity is this function of the temperature. Um, so there's a lot of data to, to probe and do this. Um, uh, so that's one source. Other physical property data we're planning on using, a host gas binding affinity. So the Gilson lab has extensive experience synthesizing, measuring, and simulating these systems. And um, so where the key is, it's, it, it, is you can functionalize these host gas systems and then test with a large range of different hosts that have different, different chemical functionality. So it's a, it's a probe of not just can I get a single host gas right, but can I vary chemistries and uh, get the differences in chemistry as a signal function. Um, ligand binding affinities. So, uh, oh, actually, I would mention that really, you know, this, is, this, this fits into the scheme before. It's just the chemical potential of a ligand when you have one host and whatever solvent system you have. Um, and uh, ligand binding affinities really are chemical potentials of a system with one protein and solvent, and the chemical potential of that ligand. So, um, we're in the process of setting up uh, semi-automated, we meaning mostly David Hahn and uh, Dites Gatsis, uh, along with uh, experience from the group and, and others of us who have done free energy calculation, setting up semi-automated protein ligand binding energies uh, and uh, with pre-prepared systems using uh, the Gatsis and the Groot. This will not be ready as part of the benchmarking for the October 1st release, but it should be, go it should be going soon after that. So um, context timelines. David, start. How many, David, how many, how long ago did you start? Oh, okay. It's been less than a month because I, when I was, when I was uh, in, in at Zurich a month ago, he was still there. So, yeah. Um, so, and basically the other data sources. So, uh, ThermoML does not have older, simpler data. They started collecting data in the 90s. A lot of like, you know, what is the density of ethanol of temperature? This was generated so long ago that, that people don't bother to do this in the project uh, recently. So, um, and one issue with ThermoNL is that while the data is public, some of the uncertainties in the data and, and the, the um, data analysis and curation is not entirely public. And so we've been working with ThermoML for a while to, to exactly nail down the conditions as to what we can release. Which is why for the existing data set, we're using average uncertainties as opposed to the, the curated uncertainties from the experiment. So this has been complicated by the fact that the, uh, the Thermodynamic Research Center uh, directorship changed last month. So um, hopefully we can get that worked out relatively soon. Right. It, it's the, the, the curate. Well, it's the curation that they're doing on the public, public data, which, which they think is extremely useful. So the data itself is public. It's the uncertainties, uh, exactly what uncertainties is. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, that would be much, when we get that straightened out, then it'll be much clearer what exactly we can use for the, for the uncertainties for regularization. And, uh, but the, the data itself, the values, those are fine. Um, there's no issues there. So uh, for simple systems, I'm talking with uh, Brigham Young University and uh, AICHE, the Chemical Engineering uh, National uh, uh, um, Organization about the Dipper database. And so this is an interesting database. Extensive predictive correlations for pure, pure fluids. There's no mixtures there. But um, so we're discussing getting access to a subset of the validated uh, data used as input. Uh, there's already nearly free. There's some licensed things we just want to nail down as we can use it uh, uh, for about 60 fluids more potentially available. But, but here's an example. So you know, for benzene, on the, uh, this is the, the almost free data set. It's for non-commercial use. We have to figure out if we can use it correctly uh, within open force field. So we're working those details out. Um, you know, for benzene, we've got all these. You can pull up, you know, temperature, dependent pressures, and uh, for all for every single thing they have, they describe, they show exactly where they got those references from. So we can we do, and have, have you know, curated it to some extent, you know, what they think looks good, what what uh, should not be used. 
So that's something that the worst case scenario, we can, we've, we've got the list of literature there that we can, we can find. We don't have to do curation uh, de novo. Um, and uh, so physical property benchmarking for parsley, the current plans, which uh, the exact choice of molecules is still to be decided in the next week. People have been rushing to get the initial fits done. Um, pure fluids, about 40 diverse molecules, uh, each at two different temperatures. Getting the temperature dependent properties is important. Um, dielectric constants, if they're greater than 12. Uh, density, uh, heat to vaporization. And uh, for binary mixtures, the idea is to take about 15 molecules and look at the pairwise interactions where they did exist, with two compositions and one state point, uh, excess volumes and heats of mixing, uh, picking molecules that are well represented in the thermal database. Uh, if time, uh, running the free solve uh, hydration free energies, I don't know why that extra E is in there, sorry, free solve hydration energies. Um, some host gas calculations, uh, but no protein ligand binding calculations by so the October 1st. Uh, deadline for the future. So that is what is planned for benchmarking. Other future data, um, partition coefficients be between solvents, that uh, data is not in thermal ML, so getting, uh, there's a lot of data out there, getting it properly curated is, would be a challenge. Relative solubility, same thing, uh, not in thermal ML, would be very useful, curation is a problem. Um, speed of sound ends up being a very sensitive uh, measurement of a lot of dynamic properties. Uh, and then uh, using uh, x-ray data, strain energies, there are problems. Uh, it's not quite as easy to use crystal data because exactly what the crystal observable is is, is more complicated. But things like strain energies could be tested. You know, it's something we should, we should, should, should uh, you want to think about NMR data. Um, you know, uh, new simple liquid data, you know, do we need to collect some more data uh, in order to fill in the chemical gaps? And um, yeah, what else? We'll have a break. We're having a breakout session after lunch, so if you have particular data sets you want us to start thinking about and, and figuring out how to incorporate, we'll be talking about that after.